Amen. I don't know what you're going to do when you get home, but you're going to be there. Amen. Amen. Maybe I'll stand in honor of the word of the Lord. Amen. Jonah chapter 1. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation, which makes it a little more plainer. Amen. And it says, the Lord gave this message to Jonah, the son of Amittai. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce my judgment against it because I have seen how wicked its people are. Verse 3. But Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. He went down to the port of Joppa, where he found a ship leaving for Tarshish. He bought a ticket, and he went on board, hoping to escape from the Lord by sailing to Tarshish. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. To the glory of God. Amen. Thanks be unto God. I'm going to use for a subject tonight the second time. The second time. Let us pray. Father, we thank you now in advance for your word. And you sent your word, God, and it healed them. And let it do no less tonight. Send your word. Heal us when we heard. Heal us to the point, God, that we'll say yes to you, even a second time. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <clears throat> I want to talk tonight for a few minutes about a corrective assignment. Now, I think it's imperative that we at least recognize and acknowledge that as persons who exist in the 21st century, we have been given a rather helpful vantage point to access and evaluate and interpret the lives of biblical characters. It's an amazing thing how we can be so critically insensitive of our biblical counterparts and companions because we have these tidbits our, bio, our biographical information that allow us to speculate and interpret who they are, who they were, and what they were wrestling with. But I want to suggest tonight that before we stand in these pious podiums, assessing and evaluating our biblical counterparts, we need to understand that we are not far from them. In fact, the genius of biblical characters is that they find meaningful expressions in all of us. The clothing is different. The context is different. The technology is, it has advanced. But the reality is that there is some intrinsic, interwoven characteristics that is found in them that is evident in us. I think one of the biblical characters who's been treated unfairly is a fellow by the name of Jonah. Most of us see Jonah in four chapters and how unfair it is for a man's legacy to be solely defined by somebody's assessment of one episode in his life. Don't y'all fool me now because y'all know it. There are some people that can do a thousand things right, but let them offend you one time. And you talk about them like a dirty, like a dirty dog. All right. All right. Am I right? Amen. Come in and understand that Jonah was not a novice. Jonah was not a sophomoric prophet. This was not the first prophetic assignment allocated to Jonah. Jonah was a man who was already operating in the prophetic school. 
He was already uh, an effective prophet. He was already a man whom God had used and was using to affect the nation of Israel. Jonah was um, already a very productive man of God. In 2 Kings 14 and 25, there's an interesting word about Jonah. I believe some of y'all didn't even know that Jonah was in 2 Kings. There's this great statement about Jonah. And I found it interesting that we have four chapters that chronicle his failure but one verse that speaks of his success. Y'all must detest that. It's amazing how folk will embellish your failures. Well, right now. But then want to summarize your successes. Second yeah. Kings 14, 25 says that Jeroboam was the king who was able to reconquer and, and recapture some of the lands that Israel had lost. And then it says that this was done as the Lord had promised through the prophet Jonah. Jonah was a man who was clearly operating within the will and according to the purposes of God. But God orchestrates a moment that is so overwhelming for Jonah until it actually becomes uh, an opportunity for Jonah to really see himself and in the process of seeing himself to step into a place where he is healthier and a little more holy to do the next thing that God has ordained for him to do. Jonah already had credibility. Jonah was already a man who was successful. Jonah was already a man whom God was using. And then out of nowhere, God gives Jonah an assignment. And the assignment so disturbed Jonah's life until he was never the same again. Listen to this. It says that one day the Lord spoke to Jonah. And the suggestion is that this wasn't the first time the Lord spoke to him. So Jonah was clearly a man who knew the voice of God. Some of us ought to get to know the voice of God. One day who Jonah, uh, 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 one day while Jonah was in the midst of reflection and meditation, the Lord spoke a deeper dimension of his desire and purpose in Jonah's life. One day while Jonah was operating as a prophet to the king, being used by the power of God to achieve the purpose of God, the Lord spoke to Jonah. And listen to what God said. He said, go to Nineveh. Go to Nineveh? Why? Because I need a prophet in Nineveh who I can trust to speak my word. Go to Nineveh. Go to the place that was clearly been an oppressor for my people and pronounce judgment over their lives. Go to Nineveh. Go to the place uh, that has been used to create real havoc, hell, pain, aspiration, frustration, suffering, and misery in the lives of my people. Go to Nineveh. Go to the enemy. Go to the oppressor. Go to the opposition. Go to the forces that have been used to disenfranchise and dehumanize my people. Go to Nineveh. You've got to understand what's going on. This is the first time God raises up a prophet to speak a message like this to a heathen nation. And Jonah is in an awkward place because at one level he doesn't mind speaking judgment. Because if you don't like folk, it's easy to declare to them that God is getting ready to punish you. <laughs> Amen. You don't mind going to your enemy and say God gonna get you. Right now. Amen. <laughs> but there's an important lesson in this text, and the lessons are for uh, for all of you God seekers and God chasers. Uh, for all you folk who are running around trying to know God, let me help you understand something with my uh, uh, naive 50-year-old self. And let me give you my theological vantage point. You think knowing God is wonderful. Knowing God can also mess you up. Can mess you up. 
<laughs> because the more you know about God, uh -huh. the more complicated yeah. your life becomes. Yeah. 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 The reality is that Jonah knew some things about God that made it difficult for Jonah to say yes. <laughs> some of the things you learn about God you love because uh, you get to be blessed by them. Mm -hmm. Then there are some things you learn about God, they complicate life because you know if God does it for you, he'll do it for somebody else. And if you got some issues with other folks and God is trying to use you to bless them, then that means God has got to get you over some stuff. All right, all right, all right. Watch this. This is what's deep about this assignment. It's a twofold assignment. The first thing is that this assignment is a foreshadowing of what would be uh, the Christ's influence over the world. Amen. 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 This is the first time a prophet speaks a message to heathen nations with the purpose of bringing them to repentance and to salvation. Heathens hearing the voice of God for the express purpose of reconciliation and redemption. Jonah was given an assignment that would seal his legacy. He would be the forerunner of the messianic assignment of the Christ and the kingdom assignment of Paul. Go to Nineveh. Folk that don't really love you. Folk that don't feel included in the promise. Folk that are not connected to the covenant. Go to Nineveh. Because in going to preach to them, some things are going to change in them. Sometimes God gives you an assignment that is uh, the trailblazing moment for someone greater coming behind you. Some of you need to understand that your anointing is a trailblazing anointing. You ought to be the star on the stage. You are to set up the star that's coming. And because some of us need to get the pets on the back and get the credit, often we miss opportunities to be the setup man for somebody else. Did y'all catch that? Many of us have missed blessings because we couldn't stand being the setup person. Some of the greatest players in the NBA are not the scorers. They get all the credit. But if you really want to know what makes a score good, look at the point guard on the team. It's not enough to just score. You need somebody who can make a good pass. What God is doing is setting Jonah up to be an assist man for the master. Hallelujah. I need to know if anybody here is humble enough to be an assist man or an assist woman for the Lord. Can the Lord use you to set somebody else up? Can the Lord use you to usher other folk into the next level of their destiny? Can the Lord use you to be a blessing to somebody else? And I know you want to be the man. I know you want to be the woman. But maybe God has made you an intercessor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. You would be the one in the closet while, while the man or woman of God is in the pulpit. Mm -hmm. Amen. You're in your closet, your secret closet, praying yeah. uh, for those out in front. Yeah. Yeah. And the reality is, even if no one sees you down there on your knees, Amen. when you get to heaven, Guess what? The Lord will say, well done. Hallelujah. That's the ultimate pat on the back. It's a foreshadowing. God is setting up and putting into uh, the terrestrial realm the paradigm of the Messiah. He is creating the kingdom model. Go to them. But there's something going on in Jonah that makes Jonah miss his legacy moment. A moment that would define him positively for the rest of his life. Mm. And this is 
the, uh, the other purpose of the assignment. Because I told you it was twofold. It is also a corrective assignment. Go to Nineveh. What's Nineveh? I'm glad you asked. Nineveh is the capital of Assyria. Assyria was a heathen or pagan nation that had been one of the primary oppressors of Israel. Between the night and 7th centuries BC, Assyria attacked and conquered Israel and dismantled their political and economic system. History records that Israel was never the same again. They were never strong like they were before. They were never influential back in those days again. They were dismantled by Assyria. Now watch this. Jonah was an Israelite who was programmed to hate the Assyrians. Because there was no evidence that the Assyrians did anything while he existed. 